it's really been about treasuries and the 10 year treasury note up to 4.54 percent. Yeah, we have seen this incredible move in U.S. Treasuries. It's driving yields to new multi-year highs, the highest since, what, 2007, yes. 2008 here. Uh, the 10-year rising as much as 10 basis points. In fact, right now it's up 11 basis points at 4.55 percent. That is the highs of the session thus far. Why are we paying so much attention to 10-year yields? Well, there are a number of different reasons why, right? They have tended to be a headwind for tech stocks in particular. That yield has also started to provide a little bit of competition to risk assets. If I can get what is viewed as a relatively stable and safe investment and get a 4.5% yield, well, maybe I'm going to buy that instead of a more risky asset. Exactly. It's um, there are so many players in the global bond market that it's difficult to parse out exactly who's coming here, who are coming in, and why. But higher rates generally attract more money. So when we have 4.5 percent, and we haven't seen that in so long, guess what? People want to come in and they want to buy those treasury bonds. To do that, guess what? They need dollars, and so that also raises the dollar. Um, if we can go to the Wi-Fi Interactive, I have a couple of charts here. I'm going to show, first of all, how the U.S. Treasury curve has just shifted up. This is where it was a couple weeks ago on 913. And this goes through all the tenors, very shortish from one month all the way out to 30 years. And it has just shot higher. These are no small movements here. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of build on what you were saying there, why does this matter for people who are looking at stocks? When there's volatility, when there are new things happening in the bond market, those markets retrench. People who are trading huge sums of money, they don't have as much operating leverage for, say, buying riskier parts of the market. And so they retrench. And then we see kind of equity prices fall off as well. Just want to show one more thing here. This is a chart of the S&P 500 over two years. These blue dots are when the U.S. Treasury yield is surging higher, and the red dots are when the U.S. dollar is surging higher. It's when they're overbought from their RSI indicator. I'm not going to get into the weeds here. What you'll notice is usually those red dots, when we have surging yields and a surging dollar, those are on the downswings, and we have that taking place right now. And so it just kind of feeds on itself, and then the market corrects, and it finds a new equi equilibrium, and then stocks can take off again. But that's what we're waiting for. That is what we're waiting for. And so there's a big debate now about how long yields are going to be at these levels, or maybe even higher, right? A yes. big debate in, among market participants, have yields gotten as high as they can get? There's also an interesting chart of the day from Jim Reed over at Deutsche Bank, where he uh, looks at the question of real return for institutional investors. For long-term investors, yields need to be above inflation, he says, over the long run. And so he brought us this chart for the chart of the day. And he looks at the history here when we have seen um, inflation below 4.5%, which is where the Treasury yield is now. Uh, most of the time, inflation has been below that level. Um, we would want yields to be above that inflation number. So uh, the question is, how long is inflation going to be elevated here? Even if you're in the higher for longer camp right. when it comes to inflation, you don't necessarily put it at four and a half percent, right? Yeah. So in other words, the long-term prospects for treasuries do look relatively attractive is what he seems to be concluding here. Yes, and I, I would just add to that, I think we're kind of Powell is, uh, he's repeating the playbook from the pre-global financial crisis from 2005 to 2007. And that's when the Fed had really high real yields. That's when you take the value of the nominal bond rate. Right now, it's 4.55% in the 10-year. You subtract the core CPI or PCE, however you want to measure inflation. Um, these are at elevated rates right now. We know the policy lag effect. We don't have to get into that because that's mm -hmm. its own can of worms. But uh, there are real consequences. And we've been at a very tight uh, market for some time.